Hello, I'm Debbie Gatlin, and I want to thank you for taking time to listen to this teaching on the Hebrew month of Elul. Elul is an exciting month. This is one of, of a lot of people's very, very, very favorite months. There's so many favorite months, but this one rabbi was like, this is my favorite month of all the months. And why is it his favorite month? Well, first, it's a transitional month. It's taking us out of the month of Tamaz and Av, which were the two really challenging months where there was a lot of warfare going on in those two months. And it began to break in the middle of Av. But now we're coming into this I I Elul month, this Elul month, which is a month of favor. It's a month of blessing. It's a month that like they say 40 days of favor, 40 days of favor of God just transitioning us into the fall feast and where favor, 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 favor is upon us. It's the sixth month of the biblical calendar and that there's a, a little letter that goes with every number and that letter is the, the letter Vav and it's a connection month. It's a connector. So it con it's connecting the months. So that goes with this month. So it's taking us out of the dark season and bringing us into the season of like an immense light. Can I tell you that God always takes us out of darkness and brings us into the light? We often think that our, that our day starts when the sun in, comes up, but that's not how the biblical calendar works. Or I should say, that's not how God thinks. God always takes us out of darkness and brings us into light. I love that he says weeping may last for a night, but you know what? Joy's coming in the morning. And I, I love in, in Proverbs, it, it says this in the fourth chapter, I believe it is, where it says, says that, that, that the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the noon, noon day. The noon day where brightness, see, God is causing us to leave darkness behind and we're going more and more into the light and the glory of God. And which go with the stone for this month, which is with is the gray jasper, which, you know, at dawn, everything's so, it's gray. And all of a sudden the sun starts coming up and this light comes and color starts coming. Well, this is a transitional month and this is God taking us out of darkness into this this beautiful light. I could say, I was telling someone today, passing through the Valley of Baca, they make it a spring. It's like you're passing through these dark places and you're passing through and all of a sudden there's this light that comes. That's what Elul is about. So it's the sixth month and, and it's the, the again, the, the number six is has the letter Vav attached to it. and. Vav is, it looks like a little tent peg and that goes with this, this month perfectly because this is the month where the king is in the field. Let me say that again. The king is in the field. The king is accessible to you. Come on. He's accessible to you. The king is in the field. And in biblical times, it was hard to get, up, get near the king. You know, you can imagine us going to England and, and trying to, to get an audience with the queen. You just don't do that. You just don't walk, walk up to her, the door of the Buckingham Palace and knock on the door. You can't even get through the gates. You know, you, you couldn't go before the king without a lot of protocol and a lot of things happening to, to move every obstacle out of, way and out of the way. And then finally you could meet with the king. But in this one month of the year, the king would make himself accessible to the people. He would pitch a tent out. There's that bob, the tent peg, in the middle of the field. And he would let the people know that he, they could leave their cities and come out and meet him. Well, can I tell you this? That God is saying, come out and meet me. Come out, I'm accessible to you. All the stuff, all the protocol, we're just going to wipe that away. This is a time when you can come close to God. Let me say this too. This is a time of the shofar being blown. And a lot of times in the, uh, the Jewish temples, or the, they, the rabbis, they blow, blow the, temp, the shofar every day. 
every day the chauffeurs chauffeur chauffeur you can tell him from the south chauffeurs being blown every day the chauffeur is being blown <laughs> And the shofar is the voice of God. It's God calling us to himself. He's drawing. He's calling. He's saying, come close. Come close. Hey, the king's in the field. The king's close. He's close. The, the, there's a, a word, the root word for emio, emiotic fluid. You know, the, the fluid that's wrapped around your baby. Your baby's just in. That, that is the word shofar. And it so makes sense that God is, in, as the sound of the blast, of God calling you to come close. The Bible says, draw near to God. And what? Well, he's going to draw near to you. He's coming close. When you just go, oh, uh, God goes, oh. You just go, oh, uh, and God goes, oh. And so there's things that he wants to birth in you as you come close. Come close to the Lord. I love that the month of Elul is an acronym. It's an acronym, and this is what the acronym says. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. Song of Solomon. It's the theme of Song of Solomon. It's like this romance, this love. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. It's time to draw close, close to the Lord's heart. He's coming close. So what? this is a time where you give a little, and you know what? He gives a lot. I have... They have a saying for this month. It says, open up for me the eye of the needle. But God says, if you just give me a little, come on. If you just give me a little, look out and see what I will do. There's going to be an avalanche of grace if you just give Him what you can. You may feel like you're stuck, but let me let you know that you give Him a little. You give Him a little praise. You give Him those, those prayers. You turn your eyes. The Bible says you turn his, your eyes toward Him. It says, You have made my heart beat faster, my sister, my, my bride. You made my heart beat faster with a single glance of what? Your eyes. Just, you, just come, you just give Him what you can. Give Him the, the little and look out. God's going to give you much. This is the God that you serve. And this is the time... Of, of compassion and giving you you know it's a time to give to, to lavish on others to to show god's kindness this is a it's an appointed time for mercy from the hand of god and before i go into that i want to say that the the letter for this month is the yud so the, the letter for the the month yud equals the, the number 10 and 10 is double fives and we know that five means grace so the Lord says, I'm doubling, I'm doubling, I'm doubling, I'm doubling to you. Grace, 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 grace. Just like we got five fingers and five fingers, got doubling, doubling. We got five toes and five toes and that's ten, ten, ten. God's doubling his mercy. He's doubling his grace. He's double, doubling his kindness. The Yud is the building block of every other letter. Every letter in the Hebrew alphabet begins and ends with the Yud. It is said to be the spark of the spirit in everything. It looks like an arm with a hand on it. They, I looked at it and I'm like, uh, abstract, abstract art. <laughs> it is said to be a hand or the hand of God. It can also mean a flame. It's the fiery hand of God. And the, the Yud is a pointed mercy from the hand of God. Mercy, mercy, all we need is mercy. We need his grace. And he's like extending this hand, and this hand, the hand of mercy. And it's the left hand, and it's called to action. You know, it's God's got, he's in the field. He's made himself accessible to us. And you know what? He's in the field. He's made himself accessible to us. Well, you know what? You got to do something. Remember, just, just a little means a lot. A little turning your heart. A little come a praise. A little being in the Word. The, do the, the, whatever you do, God's going to multiply it back to you. It's the loaves and the fishes time. It's a time where Elisha, Elijah g goes 
to the, the little widow and ask her for a drink of water and a loaf of bread. She said, give me a little water and a little piece of bread. And she's like, I'm, I don't have anything to give. I just have a little bit of oil, a little bit of flour, and then we're going to all die after I, we eat that. He says, go ahead and make me a piece of bread and you bring me some water. And you know what? That oil and that bread, that wheat, that flour is not going to run out. This is a time to give. So this is the what? This is the time where the king is in the field. This is the time of great mercy. It's the time to, where the mercy of God is being, the hand of God is being extended to you. And where it says the king is in the field, you've got to know that, that our king is in the field. And we know in Christ that every day the king is in the field. The Bible says the word became flesh and what? What? The word, the king, our king, the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. Glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and mercy. And it says, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. What? I'm letting him live on this earth for 33 years. Come on. I'm letting him live on this earth for 33 years to rescue, to save, to deliver, to make myself accessible to you. Where well, you think I'm one way, I'm not. Just look at my son. That's the way I really am. I'm accessible. I'm good. I'm kind. Come on. That's the God we serve. He's the God that's accessible and he's in the field. Can I tell you, this is a time, again, I said of compassion, of mercy, but it's also a time where God is in the field. Our, our king is in the field and the field is the, the world. Yeah. God so loved the world and we know his mercy. We know his compassion. He's calling us out into that field. Come on. First, to receive His mercy and grace, to be built up in Him, but but to know that there's a field of souls. He wishes none to perish. I love what He says after He met with the woman at the well. He went out of His way to meet with her, and then he, the disciples come back. He, they see He's talking with the woman, and they're like, "Eh," and He, he they said, "He got and he got any? Um, he, he, did you eat anything?" And He's like, "I have food that you do not know of." But then he says this to them, lift up your eyes and say, do not say there are yet six months to the harvest, but lift up your eyes and look unto the harvest, the fields, for they are white unto harvest. What? It's time. Souls are coming in. And you know what? As you meet the king in the field, he's going to fill you up to meet others in the field with his presence, with his power. Come on. This is a time where God wants to meet with you. It's his time. And this is the month also of the tribe of Gad. Oh yeah, Gad. And um, that's the, the tribe that came from Zilpha, or I should say Leah gave Jacob his, her handmaiden, and she had a son, and Leah called him Gad. And she says, how fortunate, because she, you know, again, Leah and her sister had this thing going on, and and she, she's like a son. I got another son. Nah, nah, nah. It's like that kind of a thing going on between the two sisters. But you know what? Gad was some kind of blessing. This there, there's not much that you can say bad about Gad in the scriptures. In fact, Gad was known as a mighty, mighty warrior. A mighty, mighty warrior. warrior. It says of Gad, this is Jacob's blessing over Gad. Genesis 49, 19. As for Gad, raiders shall ride him. I'm sorry. As for Gad, raiders will raid him, but he will raid at their heels. So this means this, you know what? Gad's got some stuff going on. He's got people attacking him. That, but God says, I've anointed you, Gad, for warfare. I've anointed you. And you know what? They may attack you, but you look out what you're going to do to them. The, the meaning of Gad is how fortunate. But then it crosses to, to crowd upon, to attack, invade, and overcome. And every prophecy about Gad is like, warriors, overcomers. Come on. That's who you are in Christ. The Bible says you're more than a conqueror through him who loves you. And it's, it talks, this is what it says about Gad. With one stroke of their deadly sword, they could cut off the head of an arm of their enemy. The least of Gad's warriors were equal to a hundred, and the best a thousand. 
They were known as faithfully fight to fight with Israel to make sure they received the inheritance God had promised. That is who we are in Christ. Gad is powerful. And Gad was linked up with two other tribes that, you know, where the tribes are all linked together. And they were linked into three. And so Gad was linked with Reuben and he was li linked with Simeon. And those, those two tribes were the tribes that had, they had some issues. Simeon was like this angry, vengeful um, tribe that was, that was what it was known for. And Reuben was like this uncontrolled tribe. And here's Gad. He's solid. He's strong. And he knows, and God put him, the, hit that tribe with the other, other, other two tribes to keep them in line. So let me say this too. This is a, a month. Where, where God wants you to make sure the company that you pe you keep, the alignment that you stay that you're with, they they're good and solid. They keep you in line. Come on, and you're a blessing to them. This is a time to know that that, and because the king's in his field, I have I have my little picture that I made for the the, the month that says finding your place in the company of the Lord. Just like Gad found himself with Simeon, and he found himself with Reuben because he was strong. And they were, they were like the battle axes of all the tribe. These three together were like, ah, oh, they were ferocious. They were terrible, mighty, because they, the, the right alignment, those three coming together. So again, this is the time where the king's in, this, in the field. And since Gad is a warrior, and he's, he's powerful, and this is a time of great favor, you know, how fortunate. This is a time of great favor. Then listen to this. It's time to run into the tower of his might. And the scripture that came to mind right away is the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. It's in Proverbs 18.10. So God says, you know, whatever you're going through, just run. It's, it's again, it's like running into the tent. It's running to the king. The king's in the field. Run into the Lord's safety. Run into his protection. Whatever you're going through, this is a time. There's favor, 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 favor. Now, the, the constellation for this month, and we believe in astronomy, not astrology. Astrology is demonic. Astro uh, astronomy is the, the looking at the stars. And the, the gospel is on display above your heads in the stars. This for times and seasons, the Bible says in Genesis. And the, the gospel, I should say, the gospel displayed this month is Virgo, which means the virgin. And right away you think of the Christmas story, Mary. And I, I love, be it unto me according to your will. So, that she said that to Gabriel as he brought the message that, she was to carry the Christ. You're to carry the Christ. But he's looking for a virgin. He's looking for someone that will, will walk with clean hands and a pure heart. Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands, a pure heart, who's not lifted his soul to falsehood, who's not sworn deceitfully. He will receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Come on, the king's in the field, so what? Receive his righteousness. So it's a time of the, the virgin. It's a time where, where God's looking and he's wanting this beloved bride. So, and I love, again, anachronment for Elu this month. I should say the anachronment for Elu is, I am my beloved's and he is mine. So just as Gad was a warrior and fought, and, but God is looking for warriors that are pure. Come on. He's looking for a bride without spot or wrinkle. He's calling you to come into his tent and be kissed with the kisses of his mouth. And let me say this, the kisses of his mouth. Um, if you look up the word kiss, and it says this, is to equip, to equip with weapons, armed men rule. It's one of the meanings for kiss, and it's like a long list. And then it crosses over to this like, just being equipped with all this armor. You're, you know, you're ready by what? Being intimate with the Lord, coming into his tent, receiving from the king that is in the field. He's in the field. He's in the field. He's in the field for you. He wants to meet with you. Now, let me say this. This is also, and really the main part of this month is that God Almighty wants to meet with you. And it's a time 
of teshuva. And I was like, teshuva. And that's the Hebrew word for repentance. It's a time where God is saying, examine yourself. See, again, I told you this is a transitional month where we're going in to new things. We're going into the brand new year in, in, in the civic calendar. We're going into the times of the three main feasts that are, they're, they're like those three feasts determine how you, the favor of God that will be upon your life for the rest of the, the months. By what? So by being prepared, being prepared. God wants what? A heart that's prepared for him. And again, repentance is what? A change of heart and mind. Menanoa. Come on, a change of heart and mind, and even feeling that rem that remorse for what what you what you've done. Now let me say this: Joel two twelve. And I love this scripture. Joel two twelve says this. Yet even now, and this is talking about the stuff that's getting ready to happen. That that uh, judgment is getting ready to fall on Judah, and and but the prophet knows this. Joel knows this. That God's good, and if he sees a heart that will change a heart that will line up with his ways a heart that will turn away from evil then god almighty wants to extend mercy what this is a time where the hand of god is extended in mercy to us so it says that yet yet even now declares the lord return to me with all your heart with fasting weeping and mourning rent your hearts remember he's near to the broken and contrite of heart come on Thus is a high and lofty one who lives forever. I dwell in a high and a holy place and also with the contrite and lowly of heart in order to revive the heart of the, the contrite and the, the, the spirit of the lowly. Come on. So it says, Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart and with fasting, weeping, and mourning, and rent your hearts and not your garments. Now return to the Lord your God, for he is, and this is what, what God wants you to know, He's compassion. He's gracious. He's slow to anger. He's abounding in loving kindness and truth. He's relenting of evil. Who knows whether he will turn and relent and leave a blessing for you, behind for us. Right? That's the God we serve. As we what? We take this time and just examine our hearts. And you know, you know God doesn't want you to beat on he, he doesn't want you beating on yourself. He just wants you to search your heart. And where there's things that don't line up with his heart, repent. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Turn away from those things. Receive his grace to walk this walk of the Lord out in your life. To walk this walk. And this is the outcome of what happens when we repent. I love Joel 2, 23 through 25. After they've repented and they rent their hearts and not their garments. And they wept between the porch and the altar. And Come on. This is what happens. It says this. This is, So rejoice, O sons of Zion, and be glad in the Lord your God, for he has given to you the early rain and for your vindication, and he's poured out for you the rain, the early and the latter rain. The, and it says this, as before, the threshing floors will be full of grain, and the vats will overflow with new wine and oil. Then I will make up to you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the creeping locust, the stripping locust, and the gnawing locust, my great army, which I sent among you. So what? Go out and meet the king. Let him wash you, cleanse you. Remember, the king died on the cross for you. This king that we, he died to save us. He died on the cross for us so that we could come near. The Bible says we've been given access to the very throne of grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness for sins. There's forgiveness for you. Call in his name. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I love this. Um, this is in Isaiah 1:18. Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, the Bible says they'll be like wool. God wants to cleanse us. He just wants us to come and talk with him. I love the one um, scripture in Revelations, the third chapter, where it says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice and will open the door, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. 
God wants to sup with us. He wants to meet with us. He's a mighty, mighty God. So these are 40 days of teshuva. So 40 days of favor, but 40 days of teshuva or repentance. Getting our hearts ready for the fall feast. Getting our hearts ready to receive from the Lord. One more thing. This is the month to fix what is broken. If there's any way possible you can fix what's broken and to bring things back to the starting point. And see, this is also the point month. month. So, so the point month to me is God. I, I see like a ripple of like something thrown in, into a pond and I see these rings going out from it. Well, it's reversal. Again, this is like repenting and going back to the starting place. It reminds me of of um, Revelations, the second chapter, where it talks about the church of Ephesus. And he, the Lord's just bragging on, on them. He says, you've done this, you've done this. Hey, that's good, that's good, that's good. But, but there's one thing I have against you. And he, he says, you left your first love. Go back to, to, the, go back to that starting point. Come on. It's that starting point. Okay? It's the starting point. Go back. Go back to the starting point. And again, to me, that's repentance again. And so God wants us to fix what's broken. So if there's things broken in your life, just bring it before the Lord and let Him fix it. If there's relationships that can be fixed, then let God fix it. You know, there, you're going to be called to action. This is a month of action too. you got to go out to the Lord. If He shows you things, you need to do it. If there's restitution that needs to be made, we'll make it. Whatever you need to do, let God lead you because he wants to mend things this month. He's an amazing, mighty God. He loves us. He loves us. So let me pray the blessings of Elul on you. So, Father, I just thank you for your people, Lord, and I prophesy and I pray over them, Lord God, that this is a blessed month for them, Lord God. I declare there's hunger over you, that you know the king's in the field and you're running out to him. Inadequacy is being dropped by the wayside because you know that you will meet with him. He's come out to make himself real to you. His great love is being lavished over your life this month. You're going to see his glory. Things that were in a standstill, you're going to hear the voice of the Lord and things are going to be birthed in your life that you've been waiting on. That and that God during this time is preparing. He is preparing you. He's working in your life. He's preparing you, getting you ready for the next step of favor over your life. You are a woman or a man of great favor. He's called you. And this is a month where he's mending relationships, where God Almighty is declaring over you, you're a warrior, you're a warrior, go out and fight for me, you're a warrior, keep others in line with me, come on, meet with me, receive my kisses, my armor, as I kiss you, I'm equipping you over your life. This is the month of Elul, and this is a month where you give him the little, God's going to give you much. Can I declare that over you? Give the Lord a little. And he says, I'm giving you much. You come out to meet me and I'll run after you. Just like the prodigal that's coming home to the father and he feels so unworthy, unable. But what's happening? There's the father. He sees him off in the distance and he's running, running to wrap him up in his arms and lavish upon him. God's going to lavish on you this month. This is the month of Elul. And he's bringing you into the fall feast and you're going to go into this new year with glory, ready to receive the destiny and the purposes that God has for you. Oh, you are loved by God. Now, I bless you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. God bless you. Have a wonderful month of Elul. Bye-bye.